Now as a senior IT teacher, the main subject that you will be focused on teaching, predominantly, will be digital solutions. Now it is known as a general subject. There are a set of um, general subjects that are such as mathematics, science, biology, physics, chemistry, English, etc. And these generally have a tertiary pathway. Students study these in preparation for going on to university and they are framed very much in that way. Now they're not specific to university entry but that is the general assumption. So they're very much involving theory as well as an aspect of, of practical work but much more theoretically applied than the applied subjects which we'll discuss um, in the next section. So as a general subject there are a whole range of educational aims associated with a general subject. So it's not just tertiary entrance. There are a whole range of learning outcomes that are expected to be achieved by students studying the general subjects. It's their education that occurs in their year 11 and 12 studies. So these are things such as recognize and describe elements, components, principles and processes analyze problems and information, determine solution requirements and criteria, generate components of digital solutions, things of that nature. General um, learning outcomes that are applicable to a whole range of um, uses that the students may have in their future studies or in future career opportunities. So within the digital solutions subject, it is structured into four units. Now unit one and two are completed in generally in year 11 and units three and four generally are completed in year 12. Now there are some variations on that. Some schools commence their studies in year 10 and go over three years and they will distribute those four units across the three years. So there are various ways of adjusting that. Um, there are some schools where they have, uh, uh, particularly very small schools, where they might have year 11 and 12 cohorts in the same class. And in that case, they might do um, units one and two for all the year 11 um, students and the year 12 students one year. And then the next year, all the year 11 and 12 students would do units three and four. So they sort of alternate. But in the main, most schools will do units one and two in year 11 and three and four in year 12. Now, units one and two are com completely decided by the school, essentially. That does have to be endorsed and so forth, but much less controlled than units three and four. Now, the reason for this is assessment. In units one and two, the assessment generally doesn't count towards their final grade. In units three and four, it does. It's known as summative assessment. While units uh, one and two, it's known as formative assessment. In the main, there are again variations on that, particularly if students say are sick or miss part of year 12, then some of their year 11 work may be counted and so forth, so, and it can get a bit complicated but there are rules and processes around these situations. So in unit one, essentially you'll, you'll be teaching your students about how to program. Um, the unit is called Creating with Code and you will take, through, take students through learning a programming language. In a bit more detail than what you would have taught in digital technologies. Now the unfortunate thing is that um, with digital technologies, students' study of digital technologies is optional in years 9 and 10. So you may have students that have studied all the way through with 13 years of digital technologies, but you may also have students that have finished their studies of digital technologies in year 9 and didn't study it in, sorry, in year 8 and didn't study it in year 9 and 10. So 
you can't assume that all of your students have studied the year nine and 10 curriculum that may be offered at your school. And likewise, you may have students coming into the school from other schools for year 11 and 12 and, and things of that nature. Now, in an ideal world, we'd have all the students study the full um, 13 years of digital technologies, but that is not always the case. That said, it is really a refresher of what they would have learnt in years 9 and 10, where they also studied predominantly coding at a reasonably high level, and indeed somewhat high, a higher level than what they will do in year 11 and 12. In digital technologies, there's a requirement in years 9 and 10 to teach object-oriented programming. That's not a requirement in year 11 and 12. So there are a few little um, discrepancies because the curriculum were developed by different teams. The national curriculum, the Australian curriculum, was developed uh, by members of all states, while the digital solutions curriculum was developed just within Queensland by a team of writers here. And so they didn't necessarily quite get a perfect alignment. That will hopefully come as revisions occur, but that's still something that needs to be um, established. So in the first year of the course, or the first semester of the course in year 11, you will teach students essentially how to program. Um, and you will go into more detail than in the Australian curriculum in digital technologies. And the syllabus, um, the digital solutions syllabus, uh, it's called a syllabus now, not a curriculum, because it's much more specific. It will detail the, each of the elements, essentially the commands that you need to teach your students about, because these may occur in their final summative assessment, that exam at the end of year 12. So because it's prescribed and because it's going to be set not by you as a teacher, but by an external body, you need to make sure that your students are prepared for that exam. That's why we have a much more prescribed content down to specific um, commands and concepts that you need to ensure that you have taught your students. And we'll go through those and explore what that means in the syllabus documents. So then in year, the second half of year 11, the focus is on data and on information systems. So essentially developing a database and an information system from that database um, and using SQL predominantly, but there's some other um, aspects of that that we'll also explore. Then in year 12, things start becoming more serious. This is when the, all the assessment counts towards their final grade. And the first half of year 12 is um, completed around a project where students do um, what's called digital innovation. It's the unit. And they explore a real world problem and develop solution requirements and develop an innovative digital solution to that problem that you will have set for them. Then finally, in the final semester of year 12, there is a unit called Digital Impacts. Now, this is mostly to do with data again, and particularly around security of data, how we can encrypt and decrypt data, how we can ensure that a system has um, secure use of data. And again, this looks at a range of elements that will be assessed in the examination. Okay, so that's an overview of the digital solution subject. Starts off in year 11 with learning a programming language. Second half of year 11, looking at databases and an information system. Then in year 12, looking at developing a digital solution to a problem, a uh, programming assignment, essentially. And then in unit four, looking at data exchange and protocols and security systems and so forth. Okay, now the assessment is mirroring that. So in theory, you can do what you want in terms of assessment in year 11. It has to be endorsed and approved, but you can structure it as you will. But there is a requirement that 
the assessment in year 11 prepares students for the assessment in year 12. And the assessment in year 12 is prescribed. So you don't have as much freedom as you might think. But again, we'll look at that in this, um, and we'll explore the different assessment tasks and how they are um, conducted. Okay, so in preparation for our online workshop, read through the curriculum overview and the rationale, why the subject exists. Always important to get that big picture understanding of the intent of the curriculum so that you can then work out best how to actually address that intent. Then you've got a little bit of information in the course notes about how the digital solutions subjects fits into the technologies learning area. Um, now this is mostly important because you will be under a head of curriculum who will most likely be in charge of the technologies learning area. Now eventually you will hopefully become the head of department or head of curriculum for the technologies learning area. Sometimes it's also combined with the business uh, learning area, sometimes with the science learning area, sometimes with the maths learning area, depending upon how the school has structured things traditionally. Um, but as a beginning teacher, you will most likely be under um, someone that is looking after a range of subjects. You will be responsible for your subjects, but the, well, the ultimate authority rests with the principal. That is normally... Um, delegated to the head of curriculum, which is normally the, a deputy in charge of curriculum. And then that is delegated again to the heads of departments, the heads of the different learning areas. And then it comes down to your responsibility. But you will be the expert in the digital solution subject. Where you should seek advice is around assessment and around the administrative processes, because they are quite complex and your head of department and your head of curriculum and ultimately the, the, your principal will be much more familiar with the general application of the administrative processes involved in teaching and assessing in senior schooling. And you should always seek advice from them um, in the decisions that you'll need to make around that. Of course, that will have long-term or much larger implications than just what you can control within your subject. It can affect your students' um, grades, not only in your subject, but overall across their study program. And indeed, it can affect the grades of all the students within your school if you make mistakes and if things are done incorrectly. So it does become quite serious. And that's why there are a range of different authority levels and levels of experience designed to assist you in your implementation of your senior subject. So there are also the range of applied subjects, much less serious. Now, they probably shouldn't be treated less seriously, but they most definitely are. Now, these are much more practically orientated, and in the main, they're designed for students pursuing a vocational pathway, so not necessarily going towards university. That said, one of their applied subjects can count as a general subject towards a tertiary pathway, um, ATAR, we'll talk about ATAR in a little bit, um, pathway. So they can be as important as any other general subject in terms of students' overall um, opportunities to develop a strong ATAR and go on to university. So they can be quite serious but because they use a very different system and they're not as administratively burdened with the requirements of the QCAA, um, they're not as difficult in terms of the administrative processes. But we'll talk about that in the next module. Okay, so we've talked about the course structure and the various elements of um, the units, unit one and two in year 11, unit three and four in year 12. And in the diagram you'll see in the course material, you'll see that unit one, creating with code, starts with understanding digital problems, then user experiences and interfaces, algorithms and programming techniques, and program solutions. 
but essentially it's learning a programming language. And it's assessed formatively by tasks that you will have set for them. Then in Unit 2, we have applications and data solutions, starting with data-driven problems and solution requirements, data and programming techniques, and prototyping data solutions. Then coming into Year 12, we start with the unit Digital Innovations, where we look at the intersections between users, data, and digital systems, real-world problems and solution requirements, and innovative digital solutions. And then in Unit 4, we have Digital Impacts, looking at digital methods for exchanging data, complex data exchange problems and solution requirements, and prototyping digital data exchanges. Now, in Year 12, their first um, assessment is called a summative internal assessment. So internal means you get to have set the tasks. Again, I'll be talking through about how that has to be approved beforehand. Um, and it's an investigation where students develop a technical proposal, a proposal for a project, essentially. Then the second assessment is a digital solution. Now, when it was originally envisaged, that digital solution would be a solution to the technical proposal where they propose the project and then they implement the project. Unfortunately, because of the assessment requirements, it can't work as seamlessly as that. Because the, the assessment tasks have to be pre-endorsed and approved, um, they can't be the same project. So students propose a project uh, and then they have to com um, complete a different project. And, We'll talk through why that happened, but uh, that's just the way it needs to occur because of the administrative requirements of the assessment processes. Then in year 12, they have a summative internal assessment project called a folio, um, which is essentially a series of tasks that students complete. And then there is the summative external assessment, which is the examination which is set externally by the QCAA, um, and you have quite little control over that, except in preparing students to complete the examination. So, as we can see, in Year 11, um, there's no strict structure as to the assessment tasks. But the caveat there is that you need to prepare your students for the strict structure of the Year 12 assessment. So essentially, you tend to do a mirror process where you do the same assessment tasks in year 11 so that students are familiar with those types of assessment when they come to year 12. But in theory, you could do any other type of assessment. Okay, so again, read through the digital solutions syllabus and the syllabus objectives so that you are familiar with what's involved in the syllabus. Just like with digital technologies, you have to become quite familiar with the digital technologies curriculum. Now you have to become even more familiar with a specific syllabus, which is much more specific around what you need to teach your students and essentially tick off to say that you've actually taught them all of these elements. Because when it comes to that final exam, if there's a question on that that relates to some of the syllabus material and you haven't taught your students, then your students will be unprepared for that question. And it will be fairly obvious, not only to you, but also to your students and potentially to parents and to your um, supervisors, your head of department and deputy in charge of curriculum and your principal. So unlike digital technologies, where you can get away with things sort of working and not working exactly, um, and you can adjust things and set your own assessment. In senior schooling, it's very much more prescribed and you have to adjust what you teach very much to the syllabus and very much informed by the assessment process. Everything runs to the assessment. 
while good pedagogy and stuff, assessment should always support learning. In senior schooling, unfortunately, that can't be the case because it is high, high stakes assessment where it's going to affect your students in terms of their career prospects and their opportunities to, for further study. Assessment drives the entire process. Okay. So look at the digital solutions, sorry, the yeah, digital solutions syllabus, read it through, and we will discuss that in the tutorial. And also have a brief look at the Queensland Curriculum Assessment Authority Policy and Procedures Handbook. Now I've also given you a link to the website. The website keeps everything up to date because the rules in the handbook change quite regularly as um, problems are identified and things are adjusted and so forth, which is a good thing. It makes things more efficient and effective, but it means you have to stay abreast of changes. That's why I asked you to subscribe to the QCAA um, memos, and you'll also need to follow through with um, changes as they occur to the processes and procedures that you'll need to follow in the online handbook. But the draft handbook is done in a single document, and that'll give you a bit more of an overview, while the specifics, when you have any specific issue, you need to go to the online handbook and see the specific rules as they relate at any particular time. Okay, so that's the syllabus and we'll discuss that in the workshop.